Hi, I'm Alvin Tamilia. I am the consummate bragging old guy. You could say I wrote the book on it. Uh, you really could say that, because uh, here's the book. The Ramblings of a Bragging Old Guy by Alvin Tamilia. That's me. I wrote it. See? That's me. You can tell around the eyes. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, because this is a classic example of uh, that old saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. Although, uh, with this one, you kind of can. All you have to do is, like, flip the cover over, read the stuff on the back side, and it tells you all about the book. But uh, what I really mean is, uh, well, it starts out when I'm a senior in high school, you know, real goal-oriented, uh, four-year varsity letterman, student government, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my freshman year in college, I'm having all these Norman Rockwell-style adventures that young people have back then. You know, great fun to read about these little stories. But then I blast off for the coast, small Midwestern university off to San Francisco, 1969. Hippies, cultural revolution, uh, political revolution, LSD, marijuana, mescaline, all kinds of psychedelic drugs, all kinds of not so Norman Rockwell kind of adventures. <laughs> Great fun to read about. Uh, but the part about not judging the book by the cover, at first blush, this, this book reads like it's a, an all dressed up wild child party girl kind of story. But uh, as you're reading it, there's parts of it that, that come across more like a parent sharing advice with its child. And by the time you get to the end of it, it'll be apparent to you that this is a very serious work dealing with, with some of the most important things that people have to deal with in life. You know, being in love and what, what it really is to love someone, uh, how important friendships are, and, and you know, drug abuse, how dangerous it can be even with the most mellow drug. You know, anything can be abused. Uh, the, the way uh, things you do and, and um, people you surround yourself with and the, the drugs you take and how often you take them actually change the person you're becoming. You know, you, you can start out becoming one kind of person and get involved with the wrong people, the wrong drugs, too much and actually change who you are. Uh, there's, there's talk about self-analysis. You know, you need to be looking at yourself once in a while, making sure you're on the right path for you, that you're going to develop all your potential, your personal potential, and become really the best you that you can be. Um, it's a lot of fun to read it, but it's, it's also a very serious book and uh, very helpful uh, for people. Uh, it's most helpful, of course, for the rescued cats and dogs uh, of the Lucky Cat Foundation. It's our 501c3 tax-exempt public charity that we seal up, my friend Kathy and I. Uh, we maintain two sanctuaries for abandoned cats and dogs. Uh, we rescue them. Uh, most of the ones we have are considered unadoptable by other sanctuaries, and, and they would be put to sleep. Uh, we're a no-kill shelters, both of ours, one in Northern California, one here in Southeast Kansas. Uh, we make sure everybody's spayed, neutered, tested for leukemia, tested for AIDS, uh, vaccinated, and given a forever home, lots of love. Uh, to keep them safe, uh, we build outdoor catteries. Uh, they live families together in, in a single room and they hop out their window into the cattery. It's all fenced in, fenced over, shade cloth, to keep the sun off them, and, and they can enjoy the great outdoors and be safe from all the coyote here in uh, Southeast Kansas. You know, we're on a small 10-acre farm out here, and we are surrounded by coyote. And uh, I'll fire a couple of shots into the lawn if they're howling too close, but you know, when you're not killing them, you gotta protect the cats from them. So you fence the cats. and. Uh, and they're all loving it here. They're all happy, and uh, they get the best care. Um, our sanctuary in Northern California is run by my friend Kathy, and she is an expert at community outreach. 
besides uh, providing a forever home for lots of rescued cats there. She's also working in the community, going to different neighborhoods, helping the people that live there feed uh, feral colonies of cats that they've identified. They do feeding, they do trap, neuter, release, you know, to keep the population from growing. Uh, if she hears of elderly people that have a cat that they love and they don't want to lose it, and, but it needs to be medicated every day and, and they can't do it, she goes to their house every day and helps them medicate that cat so they can, uh, uh, you know, enjoy the companionship of that animal for years longer than they otherwise would have. Um, Lucky Cat Foundation does, does lots of uh, really good things for, for abandoned animals and for people. And if you buy copies of my book, do yourself favors, and, uh, and uh, you can help a lot of abandoned cats and dogs at the same time. So uh, buy copies of my book, pass them around to all your friends, and especially to young people who would benefit most from it. Although, I gotta tell you, baby boomers love this book. You know, it was our time. Um, and uh, go to the Lucky Cat Foundation website and check us out. You can donate there. Uh, you can go to our Lucky Cat Rescue Sanctuary Facebook page and, and like us. And, uh, and you can help us help all these abandoned orphans that we're trying to save. And, uh, and I need to stop rocking here for a second so <laughs> I don't make myself too flurry. <laughs> But anyway, thanks for your support, you guys. I appreciate it.